Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you again for joining me for another reading of the book I wrote called What It's Like to Chill Out with Ratka Mladic, Raghavan Karadzic, and Goran Hadzic, Confessions of a Female War Crimes Investigator. It's the true story of my travels to the former Yugoslavia on a diplomatic envoy fight from Darko Tritunovic, um, who was first secretary of the Bosnian mission between 1999 and 2002, and my three-week stay in the former Yugoslavia where I met Rekha Mladic, Radovan Karadzic, and Goran Hadzic, and others. So right where I left off yesterday, um, we had gone to Ostrog Monastery and venerated the holy relics there in Montenegro, and we returned home, and the next day was when I met Goran Hadzic. So let's pick it up there. Um, there, was, there was also one more significant event that occurred to me during this stay, during my stay along the Budva coast. Darko was extremely insistent that one of a friend of his, quote, read my palm, unquote. You guys, well, I, in my book I said I didn't think anyone would believe it, but it is true. I did meet Gord Hodgich. In fact, I, I, did, I wasn't in the mood to meet anybody that day. It was a hot day, and I really just wanted to go take a swim. Um, I love swimming, and I, I really wasn't interested in any more of his friends, to be honest with you. But Darko, again, was extremely insistent that I meet this person. It was very important to him, so I said, okay. I figured it was going to be quick, and then I could just go on with my day. Um... Anyway, Darko was extremely insistent that I meet this friend of his, and he and Darko said he would, quote, read my palm. I didn't think Darko was into reading palms, and neither was I, particularly since we were Orthodox Christians, and that type of thing isn't allowed in our religion. But um, I felt guilty after it happened also because I'm Orthodox, and the bishop and my priest always said, don't fool around with magic and witchcraft and religions like that, that I did that day. Um, so I'm sitting there in Budva at the table outside, just sitting in the lobby while waiting for this person to come and read my palm. And I was thinking to myself, God, I wish this guy would hurry up because I just want to get out of here, go walk across the street and jump into the ocean and go for a swim. It's hot. And I was really crowded because Dark One insisted that I meet his friend. And Goran Hadzic walks in. He looked like he was very thin and pale, but it was gone. He had very long hair. Um, he was, uh, he had a beard. He looked like a hippie from something out in the 1960s. He was wearing a white t-shirt that was dirty and a pair of jeans that was all ripped up. He looked like he didn't have many clothes. And anyway, he introduced himself and he came in and um, he gave me his card, uh, which I posted on the webpage for some uh, alternative energy, quantum energy thing. And he sat down and read my palm. And... Uh, I thought I was thinking also to myself, God, can this guy hurry up? I mean, I really just want to get out of here. I'm not really, really interested in him reading my palm. But he told me I had a long lifeline, and he was very interested in reading my palm. He told me that I had a great many obstacles in life to overcome, and he really, you know, tried to be very nice to me. Um, Darko said it would be good for me because he would talk about, you know, kids. I have my, my two children I haven't seen in 15 years, and he had some things to say about that, I guess. He really believed that he was doing me a good service by reading my palm. I didn't really believe in it. I didn't tell him that, but I appreciated it for what it was worth. So um, he, when he was done, it took about 45 minutes altogether. I, I, um, I left and I went swimming. But he looked, him, Goran Hodgic did look like an old 1960s hippie wearing some ripped um, pair of jeans and a white t-shirt, and I was a staunch Orthodox Christian chick, and it was against my religion to have my palm read, but I did give in to Darko's persistence for this man to read my palm, um, and I didn't really agree with much of what he said, but he did take a long time to read my palm, like 45 minutes, and I really wanted to go across the street to swim instead, but Gordon said I had a long lifeline, and um, for whatever it's worth, I thanked him, and he walked out and he left, and I've never seen him again since. Um, he also gave me a business card. Um, I think it was the same one that BBC News displays on the website of the quantum energy practice alternative medicine. I don't have it anymore. I threw it away a long time ago. And I definitely remember the name bearing the three Greek letters, Alpha or Delta, um, in the triangle Greek letter Delta or so, something. I don't know Greek myself. I lost it a while ago. Before retiring that evening, I went for a... Uh, a uh, small walk along the corner from the hotel um, down the road to the right where there was a little store in there. 
I always felt safe, although I carried thousands of U.S. dollars in my pocket, and everybody around town knew it. Nobody ripped me off, and everybody in the store used to, you know, they knew some English and would help me, you know, figuring out the prices and stuff. And they told me how many dinars or euros I needed to pay the man, and no one ripped me off. And they were very nice. They felt very safe in the, in the area. I took, I, mean, I usually went there every night, and I bought some stuff to eat, because, you know, I get often hungry after I swam at night, and I wanted some kind of munchies in my room. And I walked back, even though it was dark, and, um... I noticed pre I never noticed previously at that evening's walk just how many persons actually were vacationing from Western Europe in Buda. When I, after promenading to the store, upon returning to the hotel, I began um, speaking some broken English to a man who introduced himself from Germany. Uh, there were other people there from Western Europe who said that they come every year, even during the war, and uh, they loved it there as I did. When I told him, the German man, that I was from New York, in New Jersey, he was extremely interested and greeted me warmly and said he was pleased that um, I was able to enjoy the areas also. And I replied, I was tired and needed to retire for the evening, but saying that he, he understood, um, he gave him a business card also. We had the same dinner that night, um, at which time Boyan oh yeah, was overcome with a toothache, and I told her that I'd pay for her filling tomorrow. Um, Dark was a new uh, dentist 10 meters from the Kosovo border, and Tamari said that we'd swim down at the aid of Boyana after we'd have um, Boyana's tooth looked at. The town we went to the next day possessed an ethnic um, Albanian majority, and organized crime was everywhere. We woke early as to get Boyana to the dentist because she could barely eat anything for breakfast. She was in so much pain. This um, was actually the the Monte, to replace the Montenegro, the Kosovo Bank refused to exchange our money for euros. Managing um, the cash was extremely difficult in Serbia and Montenegro. Well, owing to the national currency in Serbia, it was still in dinars, and in Montenegro, the national currency was in euros. And in Montenegro, people would only accept basically U.S. dollars and euros, not dinars, which was the Serbian currency. Most businessmen preferred either euros or American dollars, but no one ever knew which at any given time that uh, we should have more of on us to make business transactions. So we work early, we woke early as we get around to the dentist. Upon parking down by Kosovo, Darko led the way down a busy street towards the dentist, who I remember was a Muslim Albanian man. Apparently, <coughs> Apparently, they visited this dentist previously, and he was extremely friendly, friendly and I had Dark introduced me to him. Not at any time did any ethnic Albanians cause me, Darko, or Bayan any problems whatsoever, because I was from America, and they were served. The dentist was going to uh, take a while, he said, and since the bank would not exchange our American dollars for euros, we could neither buy lunch or anything else, and I put, me and, every, and everyone with me possessed a ravenous hunger some food. Ignoring Darko's warning not to go wandering by myself, I slipped away as quickly as possible. I left the dentist's office under the pretense of going for a walk while Bayona, Bayona had her dental work completed. Before Darko could turn around and catch me, I was gone. I walked up the main street about a mile and a half and began asking people in English where I could exchange some U.S. currency for euros, and I came upon a well-dressed ethnic Albanian high school student, a girl who spoke perfect English. She told me if I walked up the street another half mile, I'd see some men selling cigarettes outside on a bridge table, and I was to ask one of them to do the deed, and I did, and they did. Ignoring Darko's warnings not to go wandering, I made my way up to the table, the bridge table, with about five ethnic Albanian organized criminal men hanging about where they were selling cigarettes, and I asked them in English if they would exchange several thousand dollars in U.S. currency for me into euros, and they did. Um, they were definitely organized crime. They took my money and my wet cash, examined the bills, and one man walked into an apartment building and told me to wait about ten minutes. I just sat there waiting. He didn't rob me, and he returned in about ten minutes with my a couple of thousand dollars in euros. Surprisingly, I found everyone um, in both Serbia and Montenegro, even by Kosovo, very honorable in their business transactions and dealings, even if those dealings were in organized crime.
Upon receiving my euros from the men, I walked away proudly to let Dorothy go away on, and now I got the money for us to have lunch. I was excited and told Darko that I had successfully managed to exchange American dollars for euros with organized Albanian criminals, and I thought he'd be pleased with me, but he wasn't. Darko instead was very, um, he was very protective of me always, and uh, instead of commending me for, he got immediately very angry, sending, scolding me, he said, that exchanging money illegally on the streets of Montenegro was both illegal and dangerous. Um, you can't change the past, so I diplomatically apologized to Darko, and he soon forgot his anger and lived the fact that he now um, had a big lunch and his stomach was fed, basically. He soon forgot his anger. Afterward, Darko brought us to a beautiful beach called the Ada Bayama. Uh, I noticed that the people were different there. Um, they were also ethnic Albanian. They had kind of blondish hair. The women went around topless, and um, there were some... Islamic rains. A few we were near by the Kosovo border, and we were. The majority of the sunbathers were ethnic Albanian, and again, no one harassed any of us based on our ethnicity. I saw no evidence of any ethnic cleansing, ethnic war, war crimes, crimes against humanity, and there were no refugees or even a bit of garbage anywhere. In fact, my own hometown looked more war torn than did the area of Kosovo when I was there. Um, I kept I kept trying to push Darko into driving to Kosovo because I really didn't know I was there anyway. And he laughed and said he probably rejected the idea. Um, anyway, I found it a very interesting experience uh, at the Ada Boyana um, and that the international news at this time on CNN, Comedy News Network, was reporting all over the place that there were hundreds and thousands of homeless ethnic Albanians being ethnic cleansed from Albania uh, to the Kosovo border where I was standing swimming and um, I didn't see it, like I said, I saw no evidence of any of it. I wondered if the, the CNN news network in the country was actually making this stuff up and I was convinced they were. Uh, as I said, I did not see one ethnic Albanian, Roma, homeless on the streets anywhere. I saw no evidence of any war anywhere. In fact, Vietnam in 1999 was more reminiscent of it. War than it was supposed to look like there was no war ever there. It all seemed normal, only 10 meters from the Kosovo border. After a day of swimming and partially nude sunbathing, we returned to our hotel. And I'll leave it off there. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you will come again uh, tomorrow for another reading. Thank you, and have a good night.